You ready? Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dan with Tools in Action. Today we're picking up our zero turn. Instead of going to a big box store, we decided to come to the actual John Deere dealer, Buck Brothers, here in Wakanda. And we're going to talk with John and Rick over the mower, and they're going to give us all the rundown. There's a ton of advantages from buying from a dealer than going to actually the big box store, uh, which we, uh, we're we going to write about and we're going to talk about. But uh, a few of them, as you can demo most of the equipment, they have 10 times more of the equipment here. And what they have gators. Come on. How cool is that? So, we're gonna try to get one of the keys to these gators and we're just gonna take off and sneak it out the back door. And we'll see how far we get, but uh, let's go ahead and talk to Rick about the tractor. This is the new model, uh, the Z235. It's an all new redesigned model. Basically what they did was they took a lot of the features from the 225 that we had before, the good features kept those and added to it. Instead of the single cylinder engine we had last year, the base model has a V-twin, um, more horsepower and also smoother running and just overall a lot nicer, lot right. nicer package. Uh, mowing deck similar, this one's got the 42 inch deck. Um, control wise very similar some of the stuff they changed looks wise and stuff but it's not it's not too bad yeah, it feels a lot smoother too I mean that's a real nice feel to it you yep. know? a lot yeah. of zero turns are just all rattly that's real almost, clunky rattly yeah it's almost like aircraft throttle <laughs> you know? I mean that's what yeah. it feels like but. Um, service wise everything's covered up now it used to be before they had big open spaces where grass would fill up and everything would get covered now this, they give you a little bin for your manuals. Oh, nice. That's all closed in there. Your battery and fuse access is here. There's your fuse block, and also it gives you a little diagram of what fuse is what. Oh, okay. So if you have to go in here for anything. Also, this is your little maintenance thing. Tells you what intervals, hours of service, what you should do, things daily, eight hours, and so on. Um, inspection places things to check um, biggest thing with air-cooled engine you want to keep this screen that's your air intake you want to keep that free of grass because it will suck stuff in leaves and everything okay that's where it draws the air in to cool the engine if this gets plugged up the engine will overheat okay so they actually make this where these little tabs you can squeeze these this cover oh, comes wow. off so you can clean this out if you got a little air compressor at home. Well, I've never seen it before. I mean, is that, are they all do that? I just never noticed. No, that's just... actually something that they they used to be just kind of like this, and then you had to keep them clean. Now they put the second screen on there to keep some of the stuff off of there, but they also made them removable so you can get in there and clean it. That's actually a really nice idea. Um, a lot of people, if they have a little air compressor at home, they'll take the air compressor and blow, blow the stuff off. Okay. The biggest thing is you just want to keep all these shields and everything from getting packed with grass because it's your cooling system for the engine, right. for an air-cooled engine. Um, as far as access-wise, they really improved this. The engine is out in the open. You can get at everything. Yeah. Um, if you do your own maintenance at home, oil filter, fuel filter, super easy to get at. Oil drain. They give you this little rubber hose here. You can take the cap off and then oh, okay. actually move the hose out here so you can get at the drain, at a drain pan. That's another thing instead of just having so the, a lot of ease plug. of maintenance with this. A lot of ease of maintenance. Deer actually puts a lot of effort into making things customer friendly, so the stuff's easy for people to to use and you know work with. So as far as operating the unit, I mean it's pretty standard like any lawnmower. Yep. It has a, uh, a seat presence system for the safety system. There's a switch in the bottom of the seat that, oh, okay. that tells you. That's pretty much industry standard now. Yeah. Basically, if you got the thing running and you're sitting in the seat, that's where they want you to stay. You try and get off the unit, it'll kill the engine. And that's just purely purely for safety things. Right, and that's good. Though, um, too, you, know you can leave saying. the engine running, like if you need to open a gate or your garage door or something, but you, you need to turn the deck off. It absolutely won't let you get off the seat with the mower engaged. Okay. But say you're just driving, you pull up to the garage door. If you set the parking brake, then you can dismount the unit and get off and leave the engine running as long as the parking brake's set. Okay. If you forget to do that, as soon as your butt comes off the seat, it's going it's to yeah. shut off. Um, fuel tank, it's got a little the cap over here. 
clicky one just like on everybody's car now. Yeah, I like those. Then you know well, it's these are closed game. systems now. They don't vent any fuel out to the atmosphere, just oh. like people's cars. Okay. Part of the new, new emissions thing. So that's a sealed gas cap, and that's why they put the ratchet on there, okay. just, like, just like your regular car. Um, to start it, obviously you got to be on it. Parking brake and all the all the directions for all the controls are on the front oh, here. It's, it's cool. It's kind of upside down, so you see it when you're. So on you can drive. see it. Yep, yeah. exactly. When you look down, I can read all that stuff. But the parking brake has to be set. You have to be sitting in the seat. Ignition. Your throttle is your throttle slow, high speed, and start, which is choke okay. all the way forward. So you move that all the way forward, and then just crank crank the unit till it starts. And when it starts, you can back this off, you know, once it's once it's running. Now, when you're actually mowing, it's designed to be run at full speed, okay, just full so throttle. The power. But when you're just driving around the lawn or the house or whatever, you don't necessarily have to have it, Okay. you know, full speed. So, and it has an hour meter, so you can yep, track Yep, there's the hour meter. It's kind of hard to see with the light, but basically that just tells you, it keeps track of how long the engine's been running, and you can do your your oil changes and your maintenance and stuff like that. Cool, very cool. So that's a little slick thing. Otherwise, people tend to forget. Maintenance-wise, the first eight hours they recommend an oil change. Okay. For the first eight hours, that's because of the break into the engine. Right. After that, unless you're putting a really lot of hours on it, usually it's annually. Okay. Um, some people just like to do it in the spring. Some yeah, people do it in the I fall. Do. You know, just run it, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. But after the, the initial eight hours, that's the important one. It's got breaking oil in it from the factory, and all your parts are wearing in and everything. So, cool. That's pretty um, simple. Deck adjustment, height, height, cut height. You can see that these are numbered here. Those are not necessarily inches. Okay. They're one through four. Like I said, they don't necessarily correspond exactly to three inches or four inches or whatever, but they're close. Okay. But it just gives you an, it just gives you an idea. And whatever you want to set it at, say I'll set this at three. I put the little tool in the three hole. And what else is that tool for? Like well, that's actually yeah. We can talk about that too. This end of it's a 13 millimeter wrench. Okay. So you can use it to take off the bolt for your access panel. Oh, okay. You can use it for the bolts to adjust your tracking, which is when the controls are forward that the unit drives straight. Gotcha. So you've got holes here on both sides for your tracking, and it talks about that here. Okay. Just gives you an idea they're there and talks how to do it. But essentially what, what you want to do is when the thing's going forward, you want it to drive straight. Right, exactly. And then you can make adjustments so that that's the case. Um, also cool. seat adjustments, 13 millimeter wrench loosens your seat adjuster so oh, you can slide cool. the seat. So pretty much anything they figure you'd need to do on this for just general maintenance you can do with the 13 millimeter wrench that they give you for that. But that also doubles as the stop when you let that lever down, it rests on top of there and that's how you set your cutting height. Cool. So and while it's in there, it can't jiggle out. So it's kind of a neat, it's a slick thing. Yeah. I mean, and um, this is Deer's entry le level zero turn? Yep. Okay. Yep. This is, this is, the 200 series is the lowest, or what you would consider the entry level stuff. But there's like there's adjustments on your levers. Those are 13 millimeter heads. Okay. As, like I said, essentially anything that they figure you'd need to do without actually fixing something, right. just adjustments and things like that, you do you can do it your little 13 millimeter. And that is just you take this bolt out, this whole panel comes off. And that's just to get at some of the stuff on the mower deck. Okay. Um, I can take that off if you want to see it, but that's all right. It's just for getting at the pulleys. There are grease fittings on the top of the deck. Okay. That kind of stuff. That's all access through the panel. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, and you can lower right. them. You can see there's little cutouts on the the things so you can stick the grease gun in there. It's easier to do if this panel's off. Right. But you can do it. You can do it on the side. That and that's something that it depends on how many hours you know you run it that uh, how often that needs to be done 
Some people do it every time they mow. That's right. not really necessary. It's not even really recommended. Right, because they can do some damage. It pumps maybe. too much grease in there. Absolutely. Um, pretty much that's just a lot of people don't even own a grease gun. So in that case, it gets done when you do the service. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of buying at a John Deere dealer is that you guys have complete service. Yep, we'll do all that stuff. Um, and do you guys send out, like if I bought this tractor today, are you going to send me out a notification that it's time for yep. service? Okay. You will actually get, when you're registered through us and through John Deere, you get put on our mailing list. They'll send out flyers, and usually in the spring and in the fall, they'll send out with, for their service specials. And a lot of times what they do is they'll offer like free pickup and delivery. When you're done mowing with it in the fall, we'll come get it, bring it in. Maintenance. You can do all your stuff and then bring it back to you. Um, they usually offer that, like I said, in the, in the late fall or in the early winter or um, early spring. And part of it's a drum up business for us, and part of it's you know, to get the stuff done before people want to use it. Right. And I mean, when people buy a deer, they're pretty much, that's their last tractor or mower they're yep. going to buy. That's what we hope. Yeah. <laughs> and another service we do offer, and that's this trailer back behind us, is they offer ready-to-mow service, and Scott will actually come to people's houses, do the same service that we do here, take the blades off, sharpen everything, change the oil, grease it, do wow. all that stuff. Um, he brings the trailer and backs it right in your driveway and he can do that. Yeah, that's great. That's he can do light repairs, obviously, because he can't carry all the parts with him. Right. But if he knows he needs batteries or belts or blades or some of the real simple general, stuff. Yeah. General stuff, he can do that. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think... No, I mean, that's that's part of the deal that, that we offer is try and do full service for everybody so that once you buy it, you know, right. anything you need, we can take care of. And uh, sweet. All right, cool. Well, let's uh, load this baby up. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate no, no it. Or did you have anything else to say? No, actually, I was just going to oh. tell you about one thing I forgot. Sure. The hydro tractor, when you go to push it, it's not going to move when because the hydraulic pumps right, can't right. turn the oil. So they have unlocks, and that's these little levers oh. here. If you push those up into the slot like that yeah. it then locks the hydro pumps and then it's freewheel and then it will freewheel so you can push it around the garage well I, I, i've so, never seen a tractor do that so say you want to move it some of the tractors had like levers in the back oh, wow. that you could pull out yeah. to make them do it for instance like this one it's got that little arm sticking out right. the back that's sort of the same thing there's two of them because there's two pumps one for each wheel but if, if you had to roll it around the garage for some reason and didn't want to start it, it yeah, will move. Great. It will move that way. The only thing you have to remember is when you get back on it to drive it, if you don't put those back where they came from, it isn't going to move. Right, right, right. <laughs> and a lot of people will go, hey, you know. But, uh, yeah, you just got to remember to unlock them. All right, cool.